Okay, how you going? So in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a rundown of the new all-in-one firmware for building vibration and ground vibration for the Svan 958, a sound and vibration analyzer from Svantec. This firmware has recently been released to fit the requirements for many jurisdictions around the world for logging vibration in accordance to the German DIN standard and also the British standard from the UK. So. The firmware is free of charge. It can be put on uh, your Svan 958 today, so contact us if you'd like to trial it. It's highly recommended to use it with a modem and talking to Svannet servers for report generation and also data. So sending the data to the servers, just minimizing the storage on the instrument itself. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a run through of the setup. So once it's installed, once you've installed the firmware on the instrument, there's a few little um, settings that are different on the span itself, and that's what we're gonna to get to the bottom of today. So once it's all installed, what we have is our typical calibration menu. So if we press enter there, once again, we have channel one, two, and three for X, Y, and Z for your triaxial accelerometer. If we go to buy sensitivity, you will have sensitivities on your calibration um, certificate from us at AccuVibe. So basically it's all around, for the SV84, it's around the 104 millivolt per meter second squared sensitivity. I'm gonna leave it off for now, but that's where you adjust your sensitivities. And also channel four is for your sound. So if you're using sound with this as well, standard calibrations apply, that's where to do it. So we're gonna go down next to the application line. So this is basically where you can set up what standard or what parameters you want to be logging your building vibrations for. So there's been requests from around the world for people to have their own standards implemented into this firmware. As you know, we've done the two main ones, which is the DIN and also the British. There's, as you can see, there's PPV here, there's the British, there's the DIN 4150, there's KFB Max, there's a number of different standards for different countries. Some of these are in Poland and around the world. Now the last one is also a user defined standard. So you can create your own criterion curves based on whatever requirements you need to monitor. This is where you can do it. For today's purposes, I'm gonna run you through the DIN standard because that's for a lot of requirements in Australia. I know in New South Wales especially, they're being urged to monitor vibration in accordance to the DIN. So. What we're gonna do is just rotate around. We're gonna go over to DIN 4150. So what we have here is the building type. As you know, the predefined curves for the DIN standard is L3 for starting from three millimeters per second. We have L2 starting from five millimeters per second and also the L1 for 20 millimeters per second. We also have an option for a range, a high or a low range, and we have a frequency band is what we're trying to look at. It were typically default one to 80 hertz should be fine for low frequency vibrations. If you were experiencing something larger than that, then use a higher band sampling one to 315 hertz. Uh, the sampling rate can't be changed for these. These are predefined. I'm gonna leave it on one to 80 hertz for now. I'm then gonna scroll down to human vibration. So we also have a necessity to measure the acceleration for human comfort in regards to British standard as well. If we tick this on, this will give us acceleration results also in our data at the end. Now we also have an option for sound. So if we're measuring sound, construction, noise, this doesn't allow us, this firmware doesn't allow us to use frequency analysis, but it will give us overall levels, statistics, background noise, LEQ, max, min, and peak. So let's leave those on for now and press enter to save changes. I'm gonna go down now to the building criterion. These are predefined based on what line you choose per the DIN standard. You cannot change these unless you make them yourself. So I mentioned that you can create your own curves based on your own jobs. That means you can come in and edit your building types, your criterions. If we scroll down, the next one is the human vibration. This is what I talked about, the acceleration results. These are weighted. As per the SVAN 958, you will know already the high pass one, the filter, a roll off, everything below one hertz. Same thing with high pass three, three hertz, 10, 10 hertz. We have WK, WD, WC, WJ, WM, WG, WB, and that is it. So by default for the DIN and acceleration, it's WD, WD, XY, 
and WB for Z channel. Let's leave them as default. You can play around with them as much as you'd like. Now let's go down to sound measurement setup. This is pretty much the same setup that we know about in, in the 958. Are we measuring a low, a low range of noise or a high range? Low should typically be okay. The microphone correction by default will come with environment, which is the outdoor windshield. You can change that when you're doing calibrations, etc. Let's press enter. Let's go down to results. Now this is what we can see later on in the software and also on the display of the instrument. This is all interchangeable. Tick on and off what you do want to see. I'm just going to leave these all on for now and press enter. Now statistical levels, once again, these are interchangeable if you have something very particular need. So as you can see, if you have anything predefined you really need to get the bottom of, you can do L55, this is where you can change it, set them up how you want. Typically for construction, L90, L10, we're happy days. Let's press enter to save the changes and escape. Now timer is a nice feature. As you know, also with Swan, Swan instruments, you can have an option for a timer. Do you need the instrument to start on a certain time? You've set it up two days in advance before the drilling is gonna take place. Um, this is where you can set it up so you know that the instrument's gonna start then. Let's press escape and let's go down to logging. So as per the DIN standard, this is the default. This is how we measure it. The velocity step is a 30 second step. So we're gonna get basically the highest velocities within that 30 seconds and the acceleration step is per minute. Now we have wave velocity on event and FFT velocity on event. So this firmware will give us a waveform of vibration events and also the FFT dominant frequency per event. This is where you can rename the logging files, logger one and wave one, for example. Press enter to save your changes. Let's go down to events. So as per this standard, we will still have a full time history based on seven days of monitoring, for example. But as per the DIN, we're just concerned about events. So once that line is reached, that's where we want to create an event and have a building vibration with our dominant frequency, our levels and also our waveform. So we can have up to five events here and an address book for contacts, sending SMS and emails. If we press enter on event one, it'll come def um, default as not active. Let's put the right arrow, you can name this event what you like. Now the trigger, we've already set this up previously in the measurement setup as line three. So this is where you can change that. You can do LEQ trigger, you can do a PPV trigger, you can set these triggers yourself. If you're just concerned about one axis, for example, this is where to do it. Now let's leave it on line. Reduction basically is in regards to the percentage of the level. So if I've set it to L3, I know that that three millimeters per second, I'm gonna want the event to be created. But maybe just before we get to three millimeters, we wanna see some sort of alarm come to us saying that we're nearing that area. So what we can do is set a reduction factor. So 1.0 will be 100% of the level. So for example, three millimeters per second. Now, if we go down to 0.8, for example, that's gonna be 80% of three millimeters. So it'll just be before our events curving, for example. So let's leave it on that for now. Lamp alarm, are you using an audio visual alarm? This is where you can turn it on. The hold time for the alarm. So that'll be how long the alarm will light and flash and make sounds. Now, do we wanna set an SMS? This is where we can enter the contact onto the instrument itself with their phone number or we can do it through Svannet as well, which I'll show you shortly. Do we want an email alarm? This is where you can do it on the instrument itself. Once again, emailing might be a little bit tricky on the instrument, but you can do it in the field if you don't have your laptop. And also something that's pretty crucial is the minimum break. So how long do we want to wait until the next SMS or email will come through? Let's leave it on one minute or one second or however long you wish to do it. Event duration, I've had customers using 30 seconds, play around with it, see it depends if it's an instantaneous vibrations or it's more slower and continuous, this is where you can play around with it. I'm gonna leave it on five seconds for now and press enter. So that's all of, that's one event. You can set up up to five events. You can do a sound level, you can do a, a LEQ over that period, that sort of thing, this is where you can set it up. The address book, you can enter your own contacts on the instrument itself, also in Svannet, which once again will be a little bit easier, but the function is there. Let's press escape, let's go down, display, display modes. What do you wanna see on the display of the instrument when it's running? This is where you tick it on and tick it off. Display scale, linear, let's leave it. Screen setup, do you want the screen to turn off after 30 seconds? This is where you do it. Escape, file. 
Okay, so that takes us to our next um, drop down menu, which is the file. So in this fan, we have 30 megabytes of internal memory. We are using 15 megabytes for wave and wave data, and we're using 15 megabytes for time history, and that'll also incorporate our uh, summary results as well into that one file. So a little bit of a different file structure if you're using the instrument in ground vibration previously. Now we have load files, delete all, defragmentation and free space. These are all pretty self-explanatory. I'm just going to press escape. We're going to go down to remote, uh, into network setup, and we're going to turn the GPRS on. Now all that we have to do in this setup is change the APN of whatever SIM card you're using. So in our case, in our recommendation, because we know it works, we're using telestra.wap as the APN. So let me just push that in, just using the keys, the directional keys on the instrument itself. Once you've entered your APN, just press enter. You'll see some great bars uh, on the instrument itself. And when the instrument will talk to the modem, we're going to see those turn into lighted colored icons. So let's just wait a couple of seconds. So once you've established a connection using your APN that you've entered, you're going to see some um, colored icons pop up on the display of the screen. So we have the green radar bars, we have the blue Superman Svantec logo, and we have the modem connection light. So that's fantastic. Let's press enter. Leave the rest as default unless you're playing around with things. Now the last part is system, standard 958 settings, languages, auto start, battery, clock, um, external power, how are you powering it, external I.O. setup, so if you're still using an audio visual alarm separately, you can set it up here as well. RMS detectors, vibration units, the rest is fairly straightforward. So the last option is settings. You turn the instrument back to factory settings or load setting files, which you couldn't previously do with SVAN 958. Now, once this is all done, that's basically the measurement and the setup's done. I'm just gonna uh, show you quickly how to navigate the screen once it's running. So you've got your logger in the field. Basically, you press escape to go back to the running displays. And if we just press start, we'll have this green icon as the play icon. So we know that the instrument's running. You'd be pretty confident to shut the box and then walk away. So as per the DIN standard, the velocity step is 30 seconds. So we can see this, t this counter on the right hand side getting higher. In 15 seconds time, it's gonna to get to 30 and we're gonna have our first set of results. And that'll be based on the uh, velocity step of the instrument itself. So let's just wait three more seconds. We should have a PPV, X, Y, and Z, and also a uh, dominant frequency. There we go. So micrometers, because I don't have a sensor plugged in at the moment. Um, and then what's gonna happen is, this is gonna to get to another 30 seconds and it's gonna rotate into the next time history stamp. If we just press the alt and the down arrow, we'll have all of our sound profiles. So we can rotate down, see what's happening there, LEQ for the previous lot. If we press down again, we'll have a bit of further analysis. So um, some more instantaneous results on the weighted acceleration and also VDV results, which are pretty crucial for a lot of customers for human comfort. So let's scroll down and back at the square one. And as you can see, we've got our two out of two. Um, history timeline rolling on, dominant frequency and PPV. Uh, next video, I'm going to show you how to work it with the span net systems, report generating, changing settings there, that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, let us know if you've got any questions. Thank you.